Geometry Part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us talk about the lifetime of an energy resource. As I mentioned, when I talk of lifetime, I'm, I basically want to talk about the renewable and non-renewable sources. Now when I talk about the non-renewable sources, that means the sources which cannot be reused again and again. For example, the fossil fuels, which we talked about, coal, petroleum, natural gas. So they have all been formed millions of years ago, but we have a limited stock. I mean, coal, petroleum or natural gas, they are not getting formed on daily basis. So sometime they were all formed and now we have a limited stock. So if we use them too much, maybe coal or petroleum will not be left for our future generations, right? So these kind of non-renewable sources, which will not last for infinite period of time, I mean, for which we have a limited stock are known as exhaustible resources because they will get exhausted in a certain period of time. Whereas when I talk about inexhaustible resources, I'm talking about the renewable resources. That means these sources are something which are coming on daily basis. I mean, the stock is not decreasing. We keep on getting these resources. When I talk of such resources, I am talking about wind energy, hydro energy, tidal energy or wave energy or ocean thermal energy because they are all related to things which keep happening on daily basis. Maybe you will not get wind energy daily. Maybe one or two days you did not get. But it is a natural phenomenon which will happen once some or the other time. Right? So unlike coal, petroleum or natural gas, here you do not have a limited stock. It is something which you will keep on getting on a regular basis. So these kind of energy sources are better, right? Because we do not need to worry about the stock getting over, right? Let us suppose if, I mean, you, you can imagine these by taking, by considering this example. Let us suppose if you have a job where you earn 10,000 rupees every month, right? So in that case, you know that every month you will get 10,000 rupees. So you do not have to worry about your expenses every month, right? Because you'll get a fixed amount of money every month, correct? So that is your renewable sources. That means you, you will keep on getting your source of energy. Source of energy is money here. So you'll keep on getting that money at regular intervals of time. Now take another example where you work for a company and the company says that when you start, join my company, I will give you 1 lakh rupees. After that, you will not get any salary, nothing. That means you are getting a huge amount. If you compare 10,000 and 1 lakh, you are getting more amount here. But in this case, you have just 1 lakh rupees and you know that you are not going to get anything later. So that means you will have to use that 1 lakh rupees very judiciously. So the stress in this case is more. So this thing is non-renewable sources. So that means whenever we are using non-renewable sources, we always have this tension in our mind that we have limited stock. So it should not get over soon. In that case, we will, we will not be left with any coal, any petroleum and any natural gas. So that is how non-renewable sources are obviously any day better than renewable sources. But since at present we do not, because all the non-renewable sources which we have discussed so far, you would have seen that every source of energy had some disadvantages because of which it could not completely take over the renewable sources, right? So the best thing that we can do is we can judiciously make use of the sources of energy so that they do not get exhausted in a short period of time as well. They do not cause much harm to our environment. So I hope I was able to explain you the lesson on sources of energy. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com.